Long, long ago, there was a boy who loved to play board games. And his name was Spencer Williams. And that boy was me. Now, what does that have to do with Samurai Brothers? Well, absolutely nothing. I just thought I'd try to catch you off guard. But seeing as how I probably didn't catch you off guard, let's continue. Now, before I do, quick disclaimer. The game you see in this video that was sent to me by the publisher is not the final version. In fact, the Kickstarter campaign is to hopefully get the final version printed. So how can there be a final version in this video if it hasn't been funded yet? Samurai Brothers is set in feudal Japan. Now that's feudal with a D, not futile, futile with a T. After the sudden and mysterious death of the Emperor and the theft of six precious heirlooms, the citizens are plunged into chaos and they all lose hope. To restore that hope, the Emperor's brother Oho, who is now conveniently the Emperor, promises to restore those precious heirlooms. Except, he's either too lazy or not brave enough to do it himself. Or both. So he just promises the position of Shogun to whoever can return those items, you know, as one does. Luckily for the citizens of feudal Japan, now again that's feudal with a D, not futile with a T, the Emperor had six sons. They're brothers. They're Samurai Brothers. And they accept Uncle Emperor Oho's challenge. And what do you know? That's where you come in. Two to six players will become those brothers and will use their ninjas, their guards, their senseis, and their dojos to snatch up those heirlooms and land sneak attacks on each other. To win the game, players must craft strategies with just the right amount of take that and the right approach to managing their tableau of cards. Stealing is encouraged and whoever steals all the heirlooms to where they have six total wins the game. Oh, and you can also win by knocking all the other brothers out. That works too. Now I'm going to give you a closer look at how Samurai Brothers works so you can determine if it's right for you. So what I'm going to do is go through some key concepts of the game. I'm not going to explain exactly how to play, but just, again, to give you an idea of if you think this sounds like something that's for you. So first off, every game begins with a draft. There are these cards with purple backs, and they are the, the special cards, the ones that are really important in the game. And so you'll get a chance at the beginning of the game to pick out the cards that you want, the cards that you think, okay, I had this card last time, I don't think it's going to be very good, so I'm going to get this other card. And you'll just take turns doing a snake draft with the other players, getting the cards, drafting the cards to put into your castle. Now the number of cards that go into your castle at the beginning of the game is dependent on how many people are playing. So for a two-player game, you'll actually start with three guards and three heirlooms over here. You start with one samurai in the middle, that's who your character is basically. You've got, you've got a special ability and then their health track is right here. Also in the center you've got your sensei and the sensei will stay here. The sensei also has a special ability um, and they're all different. Just for you to see, these are all the other possible samurais that you could be. This guy is my favorite. He's got a basket on his head. We have the, I have these temple guards here that I've started with. I've got this black bear, this fire ant who's pretty awesome, and this sea otter. Um, they're going to help me out. I've got some other... Oops, this belongs over here with these guards. And so we've got a golden eagle, harvest mouse, and tawny owl. The starting heirlooms I have are this Faberge egg, this imperial tea set, and the Emperor's Sword. Again, these are all going to do some special abilities when it comes to that particular time in the game into the, on your turn, and I'll get to that here in just a second. So you also have some options. The other options you have for heirlooms are over here that you can pick from the beginning during the draft phase. And then you have some other senseis that uh, you can choose from as well that, again, each have a different ability and a different element. Okay, so I've cleared all that away. Let's say we're starting fresh from a new game after the draft is done. Each player is going to take a turn, and each turn consists of four phases. Now, at the beginning of the game, you're also dealt a hand of seven ninja cards, and you're going to use these to do certain actions, various, various things on your turn. The four phases of a turn are heirloom phase, sensei phase, action phase, and dojo phase, and reload phase. Now, to do the heirloom phase, you're going to choose, if you want to, it's not a requirement, just whenever you choose to do it, choose one of your heirlooms to tap and use its special ability. You want to be careful, though, because you can pretty much only use them once, only tap them once. There are a few ways to get them untapped, but pretty much once tapped, you can't use it again, so use wisely. Next phase of your turn is the sensei phase. Now everyone will have a sensei that has a special ability. Um, in this particular instance, this one says, if stolen, or this one says, discard one card and draw it to a full hand, or assign one ninja from hand to dojo. Now again, that is optional. You don't have to do either of those, one or both, or neither, well you can't do both, but you can do one or neither of those things um, on your turn. After you do that, you'll go into the action and dojo phase. 
In this phase, you will play action cards and play ninjas into your dojo down here. Playing ninjas is, is how you're going to be able to power your, uh, your cards, essentially, and they're also going to help you defend attacks. As the game gets going, because things are a little bit different your first two rounds, but once you get into the game, you can either play two ninja cards down into your dojo or play an action card. I don't have any action cards at the beginning of the game, so that's why the first two rounds are different. Let's say that I have these ninjas down here, and um, at the end of my turn, I'm going to reload. The reload phase basically means just re refill your hand. You can do that with any combination of ninja cards, which is this deck here, or action cards, which is this stack here. Since I want to do things, I'm going to draw some action cards here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so I've got seven cards in my hand. Now on my next turn, when it comes to the action phase, I can play some of these action cards. Um, your action cards will let you either attack, they'll let you steal, let you defend, block, counter, um, all kinds of awesome, exciting things. So in this instance, if it came to my turn as my action, I would play this baby attack. This would let me attack my opponent or a opponent, choose one opponent, and deal six damage to them. But there's a cost. It's not free. So in this case, I can either pay two health or play two babies of the same uh, element. And in this case, I've got two baby ninjas, but they're not the same element, so I can't do that. If I want to use this card, I'm going to have to sacrifice three health. Notice how each of the ninjas have their own health, so I can discard any combination of them to as long as it adds up to three. Since I don't want to spend a bunch of cards, I'm just going to discard this one. And now I can deal six damage to my opponent. My opponent can then play a defense card, and then they can also use their own ninjas or guards to uh, absorb that damage so that their samurai does not take the damage. If at any point you choose not to or don't uh, absorb damage through any of your other cards, it will go to your samurai, and if your samurai ever gets down to zero, then you're out of the game. If you're not knocked out, but you knock everybody else out, or they knock each other out and you're left, you win the game. But also, other action cards will let you steal things. You could steal a sensei, but most importantly, you can steal heirlooms, which is really what you want to do. Because remember, if you get all six heirlooms, you win the game. When you steal an heirloom, let's say I brought this one over from another player, they become untapped so that now the new player can use it. And then again, once you're able to steal all six, you win the game. And you either win by doing that or by surviving and knocking out everybody else or waiting till everybody knocks each other out. Okay, that's that. Follow me. And there you have it. All the happy little citizens can go back to their daily lives knowing that the heirlooms are all now safe and sound. But what about the mysterious death of the Emperor? Well, that's not important. What is important is that you consider backing Samurai Brothers on Kickstarter, and hopefully I've helped you better determine if it's right for you. Something that I am 100% confident that is right for you is the Lighten Up Initiative. On this YouTube channel, you can find board game reviews, board game comedy sketches, how to play videos, all sorts of videos right here on the Lighten Up Initiative, and I encourage you to give it a nice browse through. Also, consider subscribing. It would make me extremely happy. And speaking of being happy, don't forget that board games are made to make us happy. So don't take the board game hobby too seriously. Just lighten up.